the bridge now as he doesn't want to pop up. And... All right. Oh, I don't really think that oh. Selfless Trap went where it was supposed to go, but the Dragon Tribe might have done the job. Sire play, though, inside the Immortality Field. It keeps... Ah, just stay inside the Immortality Field. It's not that difficult. It saves you from so many important ultimates, and it's probably his best ability. It is, of course, the one and only Baptiste. I'm pretty sure the title of the video already spoiled that for you. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to a quick chat about Baptiste. He's joined us in the Ranked Ladder, and he's also joined us in the Overwatch League. I don't know about you guys, but I've definitely had a chance to try him out myself, and he is... A lot of fun. He's a lot of fun. He's pretty good. I've heard a lot of opinions back and forth on, oh, he's not that great. Oh, he is super great. But I've seen also a number of playstyles develop with the pros and with the players. But we've now got Overwatch League footage to go on. So, yeah, I've been recording some first-person perspective of some various pros playing Baptiste and been looking at particularly where are they using him? What uses are they making of him? And you can see here that San Francisco Shock, they are a team that seem to love this new hero, but they're using him in a kind of unorthodox way. They're running a 3-3 comp at the moment on screen. And you can see that Rascal, instead of playing Brigitte, he is playing Baptiste. And the reason why is pretty simple. On some maps where especially the enemy team is going to be on high ground or going to be difficult to reach, Brigitte might not be able to help you that much. She just can't hit people much with her rocket flail, she can't reach, and as a result she doesn't give you that much value. But Baptiste does give you value over distance. Now, Baptiste does have some weaknesses, of course. He's a little bit less durable. He's less good against those characters that are weak against armor, and he is a little bit more likely to just, well take a bit of an unfortunate hit and end up going down at the wrong time. His ultimate's also not quite as good, I must say. And of course, Rascal, well, he realizes perhaps that they're not going to be able to hold this first point. They might want the Brigitte for the second point, or maybe they just want an option against the Sombra. And as a result, he ends up swapping off our new hero. So that's kind of the big thing that I was curious about first. Does Baptiste come in and just replace Brigitte? This is kind of what I was afraid of and what a lot of people were afraid of when they first saw the hero was, well, does he just reshape the meta in a way where, oh, it's just going to be goats, but they've nerfed Brigitte enough where now Baptiste comes in and kind of just replaces him, right? They just come in and they go, yeah, we, we don't need the Brigitte anymore, we can just use all the AoE healing that this guy can bring, and now we have this other option. So, yeah, does he actually do that? It seems to be more of a situational thing. It certainly opened the door on perhaps, you know, some new playstyles being developed where if you do have maps that are a little bit more high ground oriented or have difficult to reach high grounds, you definitely going to want that Baptiste. He does a lot of interesting things to the game in general in terms of providing survivability, but as you can see on the screen, it doesn't do a great job if the enemy has a lot of displacement. If they can knock you out of that invulnerability field, it doesn't give you a huge amount of advantage. It does, however, give you a lot of healing. Like, Baptiste gives you so much healing in terms of value, and now he has his ultimate ready, he can plonk it down and start shelling out a lot of damage. At distance as well. He also does something really cool there. We'll talk about this a lot later with a very specific game where he's dropped to his invulnerability field around a corner. The enemy team can't reach it. And as a result, his team's got a lot of survivability. So he definitely brings a lot of utility in contrast to the Brigitte in terms of fighting teams that might be playing from a greater distance or on maps where you might not be able to get the Brigitte onto high ground. San Francisco Shock seem to absolutely love this playstyle. And honestly, I'm kind of glad to see it. I don't get me wrong, Brigitte has some appeal in terms of what she can bring. I think she'd be fine in a 2-2-2 sort of situation where you can balance the hero around playing in that 2-2-2, but when you, she's just piled on top of other people, well, then it gets a little bit more complicated. You see they brought out the Sombra now as well, but Rascal can use this guy and can use his accuracy. Rascal's a skilled DPS player, and now he has a hero where he can actually start to put that to some use. He has that long-range ability to start shooting people down, and, well, you play an FPS game to mostly shoot at people, and as a result, you get a lot of power out of this guy course when one meta leaves a new one comes in to take its place and sometimes well that new one can be even scarier as you can see we have the muck mayhem in front of us in the yellow and in the red and uh, it's just such a gaudy color scheme. It, it's it's obnoxious everything's just made out of mcdonald's plastic it's terrible but you can see that they are playing probably one of the most bunkerish of bunker comps they have torb they have arisa they have bastion and they have baptiste all piled on top of each other and you can see all the healing output coming out from Hagapen right now as he's just pouring that healing onto everyone in front of him the cool part about this bunker comp in particular is the fact that well zephyr and chris can go and split off and go and poke around on their own on the pharmacy and sort of stop people just hiding the 
you can use that to sort of expose things and Baptiste can actually handle this well enough on his own when he just has to heal people in a big clump you can see those right click heal grenades doing so much work keeping everybody alive and safe the mercy only has to really come in occasionally to top up Hagapen himself even though Hagapen does have his shift that will heal him a little bit he can mostly just worry about the Farah. there's enough healing up here to make a lot happen and even when London Spitfire initiate with some big ultimates like throwing in a dragon strike and throwing in other huge ultimates that defensive ability of Baptiste that ability to throw down the immortality field means that they don't all die to it they don't need a Zenyatta to survive those sorts of things instead you have this ultimate uh, this ability that effectively makes a lot of ultimates in the game much much weaker also cool thing to see and just something for uh, to note for your own play if you do see a Mercy go for a race, just spam heals on them. Again, you can see he uses his Immortality Field to survive a Diva Bomb. Does end up going down to the follow-up kills, but it's such a powerful ability in terms of what it can do to stop people from just killing your team. Even when the point breaks, he still has a lot of use, especially on a map like Hanamura. Like we been, uh, mentioned before, Brigitte, she can't do things at long range. She has very limited sort of mobility and she can't really get to people very easily if they're on high ground and such. But with the help of a Symmetra just popping out of spawn for a couple of seconds to get everyone on high ground and Baptiste up here as well. Again, the normal answers don't really work. And if you watch the replay, uh, the intro clip again, rather, then you'll notice that, yeah, the big point of this clip, the big point of of sort of why you have Baptiste in this is because that immortality field does something that no other ability in Overwatch really does quite as well except for maybe defense matrix and that quite simply is the ability to negate ultimates in their entirety the ability to stop things like dragon strikes just clearing out your team without having to use another ultimate in response it is an ability that beats alts and that is not a common thing. In some cases, you know, it's, you know, you can argue that Arna's Sleep Dart maybe can kind of do that. Diva's Defense Matrix definitely does, but this is definitely not on the same level as landing a Sleep Dart on a Nano Bladed Genji, which is difficult and rare to do. Instead, you should expect to see this ult, this Immortality Field, to really be the priority of the Baptiste player. Getting it right and getting it down correctly, and also the enemy team watching for it, is going to be a very important thing going forward. You can definitely stop Hanzo's from killing off your entire team. You can stop all sorts of bad things happening you can stop dies from killing you you can actually uh, set yourself up as well to just pump out a lot of healing if you use the immortality field and realize that your team is going to die you can instantly drop your ultimate use it to get all the extra healing output that you need as well to keep everybody alive and then maybe get a lot of work done and so we're going to take a look at a game that happened between Paris and the Gangzhou Charge, and well, it's bunker versus bunker action. If you look at the tops of your screens, you can see that both teams running Bastion, Orisa, and Baptiste, but there is some differences between the two. Paris, of course, running the Baptiste on Cruise, friend of the channel, and support main, and Charge are running it on Kib, who has become something of a Brigitte main, unfortunately, but is more of a DPS player overall. So both teams varying things up ever so slightly. Of course, both teams are just running a two support mix however and you're going to see some cool things with that immortality field and it is really the defining ability of his kit getting it right is what makes or breaks a good baptiste and this is something that i've learned myself when playing ranked games as well i've seen it reflected in my play making sure that if i use it correctly it's going to do a lot of work you can see that cruz is deploying it now once that arisa barrier goes down and especially once that ultimate comes out of the enemy baptiste as well it's just going to divert fire and give the time needed for the arisa shield to come off cooldown for the bastion to do some extra damage and just to give his team a moment of breathing time to get everything going it's not only a count uh, a counter to ultimates but it also just gives people a few seconds of breathing room especially on ranked you're going to see people just not shoot the lamp quite as consistently lamp by the way is sort of the, the pro cool uh, cool out for it and i kind of like it so yeah the lamp needs to be focused down and that just takes a little bit of time to sort of realize cruz also uses the jump boots a lot by the way he uses it more than probably any other player i saw because he is kind of an aggressive fellow i'd say that you can do this to yourself it's going to help build your ultimate a little bit quicker you can bounce up and down from high ground to low ground just be very aware of what the enemy team is running if they're running things like mccree soldier widowmaker might want to be careful might want to hold off on it as you know she's just going to be skeet shooting you basically if you try and jump above the Arisa Barrier. If they're running a comm that doesn't have great long range damage yeah you can probably go a bit nuts with it and get the best out of that ability but Cruz is going to do some really cool things, and he needs the help of his team to do this, but if you are working with a Baptiste, you can absolutely help him out by just playing relatively near the wall, because if the enemy team does start throwing these big ults in, and does start throwing in a lot of damage, notice that he put the uh, the lamp down 
inside the wall, inside the door frame. He didn't put it down in the middle, he didn't put it down anywhere the enemy team can shoot at it. This is a really cool ability to just like hide that lamp around a corner, make sure the enemy team can't focus it down, and when they can't do that, well, you can't lose, you can't die anymore, and so you end up winning. You can see that the Gang Shao Charge having a really hard time. Every single time they try and come around this corner now, they're walking either into a damage amp bastion, or they're walking into an EMP, or they're walking into a supercharger. There's constant ways to just make sure that they can't smash their way through, and even if they can, the nice part about this team comp is they have the Zenyatta in reserve as well, who can just throw out a transcendence at any panic moment and try and keep people alive. Next push, Gang Shao Charge have tons of ultimates coming online. Let's see how they handle this one. Well, Paris Eternal are going to back up, wait for their moment, wait for the enemy ults, uh, wait for the enemy to uh, sort of get into position for these guys and then instantly spring back, use their own ultimates very aggressively. Again, Immortality Field, just to be sure, just to make sure nobody goes down during all of this and they're going to collect themselves a pile of kills. It was a crazy match. I recommend going and watching it if you are curious about how Baptiste plays because Cruz is actually really, really solid at it and it just gives you a lot of learning experience. Paris, incredible players. But far from perfect, Paris Eternal once again running the bunker comp. This is where Baptiste thrives, right? 2CP, bunker comps, everyone piled on top of each other. They've got a Sombra to do some roaming. It's very similar to what we saw against the charge. Instead, they're flying in against uh, Chengdu and, well... Elsa's brought a surprise for them, and it's not a Winter Wonderland this time, no, it's a Teleport in Wonderland. With two cheeky teleports, they get themselves around the point. They just sidestep it completely, and now Paris, well, they're in trouble. They've got to move. They're in the same situation that the charge were in last time. They have to move their bunker into the enemy team and into a Symmetra as well, which is no easy task. And even some nice little uh, Baptiste tricks happening on this one. Again, they're going to use that line of sight to get the immortality field down once, a, uh, once the... Bar uh, barrier goes down, Immortality Field comes up behind the bell, but the enemy team can't see it as easily. There we go, it's up and running now, and now everyone's nice and safe, they can move on to the point. You can see it's still pretty much on four hit points, they can't get rid of it, and as a result, Chengdu can set themselves up on the point, it gives time for Jinmu to get into the back, to throw some grenades in, and get a lot of work done. Chengdu dismantling the bunker with extreme precision. Paris, well, they're gonna try it for a second time as well on their second defense on Hanamura. They, of course, did end up losing um, the, the second point as well. As you can see, the map goes into its later stages. And again, they did some minor adaptations, trying to sort of poke down, setting up the Diva to try and destroy the teleporter, perhaps, or get some early damage. And they even rotate around the point to get some bunker on bunker action. Both teams still running the Baptiste and still making use of that immortality field. They have the Sombra set up and ready this time as well. But again, Chengdu, they just basically do the same approach and because Shadowburn has to sit so far forward on the point well there's no amount of helping him at this point both tanks go into body block diva gets demex because of all the damage coming through and as a result paris eternal will just slowly be eroded away so let's bring it all together. What can we learn from the pros about Baptiste? Well, first things first, he is somewhat situational. Like most supports, he is going to be dependent on the comp you are running. If you're running like Genji Tracer, he's just not going to be as strong there. You're not going to be able to heal them and hit them with your grenades. It's even harder than playing Ana with those sorts of comps, trust me. And yeah, it's just not going to work super well with those sorts of guys. Instead, you're going to want team comps where you're going to have a couple of people standing around in one location. 2CP, especially when you have your back against the wall, he's also very good at stalling points just because of the immortality field gives him so much extra survivability he's great for coming out of spawn throwing that field down and stopping the enemy team from just getting a quick and easy cap you are going to want to use his left click sparingly. Most of the pros I watched play, they mostly spent almost all of their time right clicking like crazy, throwing out all those heals. This is one of the big differences between him and Brigitte, I would say, and Zenyatta as well, is that you can't really heal and do damage at the same time. Third thing, that field, the uh, ultimate ability, the damage amp field, is also the healing amp field. Do not be afraid to use it liberally. You build it up nice and quickly. You build it up super fast for your team. Throw it down in front of you or throw it down in front of your team, depending on what you need, and just pump out healing as much as possible. Don't really worry too much if people can't shoot through it. Just get that healing out there if you need to get the healing out there. It's a big deal, trust me. It really does amp up the effectiveness and efficiency of all of your healing output. And last, but by no means least, that invulnerability field is so crucial for making this hero work. You really need to save that for crucial moments. Don't just throw it down willy-nilly. You've got to make sure you're using it at the right place and position. If you don't, if you just waste it, then the enemy team can get a lot of powerful ults off. Ults that you could stop with a simple ability. And it isn't like, you know, eating a grab with defense matrix. You should be expected to stop things like diva bombs, junk rat tires, all sorts of bits and pieces. Only use it if you really need to use it 
and you really need it to save your team otherwise save it for those big important ultimates because it can really swing a game Last, but by no means least, yeah, just focus on that healing. Like, trust me, I can't state this enough. Please don't be, you know, the, the bad Moira. Don't be the bad Baptiste, the bad Ana, where you're spending all your time pretending to be a DPS. Even watching these DPS players sort of throw out all of the healing rather than doing damage, the only time they really start bringing out the damage is when they have that damage field available to them. And even then, they're trading off between healing and DPS as necessary. So don't go thinking that this is going to be some sort of Soldier 76 where you can just rail people and shoot people down. No 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 this is a healer first and foremost play in the second rank play behind the tanks and just pump out all that healing and your team should be thanking you for it all right guys thank you for watching to the end this has been a quick look at the pros at playing baptiste as time goes by we'll probably learn more about how this hero fits in but it's definitely been a joy to watch the pros player over the overwatch league weekend Again, as the meta has blown wide open, I want to know what heroes you guys want us to focus on going forward. We can probably get footage on just about any hero now because everyone's kind of playing everything. So we could have Genjis, Faras, Mercies, uh, all sorts of things available to us. Reinhardt, if you want more Reinhardt, we already did one on Reinhardt, so go watch that instead, perhaps. Uh, but Winston, for example, Diva, Zarya, oh god, we can watch so many different things. So definitely let us know who you want us to keep an eye on in future. Thank you for watching, guys. It's been my pleasure to bring this to you, and I'll see you next time. Toodles.